When it comes to pre-hospital management of TBI, many clinicians think the only option is to scoop and run. Mm, well, they are wrong, and today I'll tell you why. I will reveal a special formula you can use that might literally change the outcome for your patient. No advanced meds, no fancy gear, just a bit of physiology knowledge and the equipment you've already got on your truck. And as a bonus, I'll share a neat airway trick for TBI patients with blood pouring into the airway. Stick around, you want this one. My name is Alex Hepner, and this is Group Call. Sir, stay calm. This is the special formula for TBI. It has four simple elements. One, keep your patient warm. Two, administer early analgesia. Three, carefully monitor ETCO2 and keep it within the normal range. And four, forget systolic BP. Focus on MAP, mean arterial pressure. Now let's break it down and the references for everything I'm about to mention are in the description to this video. Deep in those dusty physiology books no one wants to read these days, there is an equation that explains how the brain stays alive, okay? CBF equals MAP minus ICP divided by CVR. Looks intimidating? Nah, stick with me. It's simple. CBF means cerebral blood flow, or in plain English, a happy brain. And a happy brain depends on three things. MAP, ICP, and CVR. Let's break this down. MAP mean arterial pressure. Unlike systolic pressure, which is just the peak value, MAP represents the average pressure driving blood into organs. Um, think of it as the quality of circulation. On the most monitors you will see it in brackets. In adults, aim for 80 millimeters of mercury. In children, it is age dependent, but roughly around 70 millimeters of mercury works. How do we support MAP pre-hospitally? Use small, careful fluid boluses between 50 and 250 mils uh, whilst on the way to a &E. Don't go crazy with fluids, because uh, too much fluid might mess up another element of this equation, intracranial pressure, ICP. ICP is the pressure inside the skull. Normal ICP is between 7 and 15 millimeters of mercury, but it can spike from something as simple as a sneeze. Now, listen carefully, because this will blow your mind. Bad analogy. Forget the endless debates about C-spine collars increasing ICP, okay? The real ICP killers are pain, fear, and CO2 retention. Those three increase intracranial pressure far more than collar ever will. So, how do you keep ICP low? Administer analgesia early to address the pain. Right now, slow IV infusion of paracetamol seems safest, but keep up with the latest evidence. Also, monitor ETCO2 to manage CO2 retention and reassure your patient even if they are unconscious. Evidence shows they may still heal you. And yes, I talk to unconscious patients. Some colleagues think it looks stupid. I don't give a... I don't care. Last element of our secret formula is CVR, cerebrovascular resistance. This is how tight the blood um, vessels are. The trick to maintaining it? Temperature. Hypothermia increases resistance and reduces cerebral blood flow. That's why I said to keep the TBI patient warm. But here's the kicker. Both vascular resistance and ICP are heavily influenced by CO2. That means your ventilations influence two out of three factors, and you can either save the brain or wreck it. Target ETCO2 between 4 and 6 kilopascals, 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Remember, ventilation is not just about oxygen in, it's about CO2 out. Let's talk about the nightmare airway, okay? TBI, blood everywhere, thick clots, maybe bits of food. Your Yankawa isn't touching it. Here is the trick. Ditch the catheter. 
use this suction tubing directly. It works surprisingly well, okay? And if your senior colleague or manager moans about the tubing size, show them a manual suction unit. Those things are often even bigger than stand-up tubing. But what if the bleeding continues? Well, that's when the salad technique saves you. There are plenty of videos about it uh, online, but I'll show you how to slightly modify this technique if you don't have a Ducanto catheter. Try this. Park the suction tubing alongside your laryngoscope blade and leave it there while you work. Now, just avoid this soft palate, okay? You don't want to trigger a vasovagal response. Oh, one more thing, positioning. Some studies say a 30 degree head up tilt lowers ICP. Others say it impairs venous return. Honestly, I don't know. What I do know is that the diesel still matters, okay? Your patient won't get better lying on the tarmac. If you found this video useful, check my other videos. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.